Hi Jamie, I'm John. Hi John, nice to meet you. Really good to meet you mate. That's it. Uh, obviously I've loads about your dad. Yeah. How's it feel like, you know, finally getting wolves in motion and, and films rolling? Um, it's been quite emotional really because um, obviously he's not here and uh, it's been talked about for about 30 years and, and it's no word of a lie. Someone put a seed in his head when I was about 15 and said your story would be make quite a good film. So, you know, at home, 30 years later we're here. I mean, he was always going to do the film before the book. It was like a long, long time before. And for some reason he just couldn't get it off the floor. So to do it actually, I mean, even though I've been working on it five years, it's actually took 30 years to actually get here today. Okay, we're here on set of um, My Name Is Lenny. Um, we're filming in Ezra Street, which is just off Columbia Road. Um, it's just on the borders of Hoxton and Bethnal Green, which obviously we all grew up, even though my dad was born in Hoxton, and I was actually brought up in sort of Bethnal Green in Bow, and I went to school there just across the road. But the reason we're using this, because it's so, uh, it's so, um, it's so real with the cobble streets and everything like that, you know what I mean? So, uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, you know, look at the authenticity I was looking for. I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic. It is fantastic. All it's, I mean, just all going, it's like going back when I was a kid. Yeah, and also all the extras have come for free. They're all off my dad's fan pages. In blistering heat, it's costing them money to come, stay in hotels, pay for their trains and everything. And obviously, look, it's 100 degrees, I mean, you're absolutely sweating. But, um, you know, look at it, it's absolutely fantastic. But this is my cousin Martin Askew, who is in the film. Don't, don't film me, please. <laughs> he he, he co-wrote My Name Is Lenny, and he was also playing Jim Irwin, who is the wicked stepfather. Who he's absolutely brilliant at it. I play uh, a, a, a psychotic lunatic uh, who, who beats up a child, who beats up a, a woman. Uh, and obviously, once you see this character, you're, you're, you're limitified with Lenny's trajectory. Harry, Harry sort of goes and becomes the governor because he was, he had that rage. But it was installed early on with the, you know, because of the trauma he went through as a young, as a young man, as a young boy. You know, a lot of people don't realise that about Lenny's, Lenny's story. It was a, the family do. It was something that we all, all knew about. We knew about Jim Irwin being this brutal man. And uh, back in the old days, it was like it was a domestic. It was like, oh, that's something that's at home. But we, we went with that storyline because then he also suffered with, you know, uh, like OCD. But back in the East End then, you know, you was just, if you had a little problem, you was, you was perceived to be a bit of a nutter or a lunatic. But being a lunatic in the East End was like, oh, it was a good thing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was like a badge of honour, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? But obviously, you know, you kept it to yourself because if you went around saying, oh, well, I'm counting a thousand steps a day, well, he's a nutter, this guy, just stay away from him, you know what I mean? But he was all sort of disguised and, uh, and I think that dealt with a lot of issues he was having because he would turn into extreme violence, you know what I mean, as well. So perhaps he was a little bit vulnerable about his OCD and if he thought people were thinking about it, then he would go into a rage, you know what I mean? And obviously there wasn't a lot of opportunities for working class boys in, in East London, was there? No, there was no role models, there was no education. So what he had to do, he had to fight his way out of the East End. That's, his, that's all he'd done. Yeah. And I know it's like an old cliche, but to put food on the table for his... Uh, for his wife and kids but um, and obviously he was good at it so he thought you know what let's try and make some money out of it but in the end I think he knew it wasn't the way forward you know he, he knew it was you know it's, it just wasn't for him anymore and he just realized that he needed to do something else and that's why he liked the acting he really always wanted to sort of be an actor and you know that's, and that's what sort of the profession he went into in the end and obviously he wrote the book as well so it's a, a story of adversity his story arc is something that it's not just a cockney fuck fest. This is an intelligent film about a man who, who, in the East End, a lot of people will tell you that he was a good man because he helped a lot of people. It wasn't just people who wanted a problem, they got a problem, and he would, he, you know, he, but that was, part of the, that was part of the culture of the street. We're not celebrating violence. What we're doing is we're telling a, a, a story of a, a young boy's fight to transcend 
and, and why and did he become so yeah. violent? What was his story? Like when we touched on earlier on, he, you said me was my dad a born fighter? No, he was not a born fighter. He was a direct result of his upbringing from his abusive father, who Martin yeah. is playing absolutely exceptional. Maybe a little bit too good he's playing it here, really, so he's actually well, scaring I, I, me. Every I time. mean, they put the young boy in the, in the piece. We had a standing young lady who was a stunt lady, who, who, who I had to properly kick. But, you know, it, it was it was very difficult. The thing is, I, think I enjoyed it too much. <laughs> 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 anyway, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, no. Nice one, mate. Night, really yeah. good talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. The old, I mean, look, as you saw, a bit of period piece, I mean, you can see all the old 70s cars, 70s scooters. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, you like it, didn't you? Oh. you want to drive. I mean, it, it, I think that'll make a good piece of you actually driving off in the sunset. Yeah, it'd be nice, <laughs> wouldn't it? Take <laughs> <laughs> so, my missus. Look what I've come home with. <laughs> That's Ron Scapello, the director. Yeah, Directed pressure. Pressure. Right. pressure. pressure. <laughs> We give that a good review, I think. Oh, yeah, it is. Fantastic. Yeah. You've oh, reviewed this film. Yeah, yeah, I saw that review. Thanks, that's very kind of you. Yeah, hopefully this one's uh, as good, if not better. Totally different sort of film, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Some of the themes run true. You know, it's kind of a study of kind of masculinity mm -hmm. and uh, the construction of an identity that became larger than life, but also conflicted, so. It looks, it looks fantastic. Thank you very much. And it's yeah. like going back to my childhood. It's we're all really, it's been lovely in many ways. We've shot very locally, with three square miles of where Jamie and Lenny were obviously brought up. And uh, this little street hasn't changed much, you know, a little bit of detail here and there. It's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. It's like the family atmosphere. We're like the family, everyone's sort of got each other's back. Got, you can really always cool. get emotional about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be sad when it ends. I mean, we're going to have a few tears on Saturday night at the rap party. The, fan, the fans are the work already, James. So, yeah. Yeah. No, but listen, Josh, I, mean, I keep saying, but I think mean, it's going to be a landmark performance. Supporting cast, Chanel Cresswell, Fran, John Hurt. He, he looks so like Lenny, though. No, no. Do you think he's a he's, he's a, a long gone breed now? Are there any other people like him anymore, or is that just because obviously East London's not the same as it used to be? Is it? It's, it's totally totally changed. And there will never be no one like him. I tell you the reason why is because you've got all the mobile phones now, photos, you know. Everything's social media, everything's doctored so quick. So if he lived that life now, he would be arrested or, you know, he would be killed because the, the streets are, are different now. But basically in the 70s, when you had a problem with someone and you had a fire, you wouldn't call the police. You would, Next day you'd shake around the pub and you'd buy him a drink and, and that's how it was. And, you know, when I grew up and when he grew up, we didn't have computer games. We had like a, a football, a tin can and a catapult. That's all we had. But it seems like to me then everyone got on much better anyway. And you know, like even when, I'm, when I was making the film, the documentary, when I was interviewing old people or anyone, like we've lost our sense, we don't know our neighbours anymore. Everyone's paranoid to knock on your neighbour's door and ask for help or ask for sugar. I know it's an old thing, but that's what it, and, and then when I'm interviewing people, oh, I like the East End's change. But you know, you have to evolve, but it, I personally doesn't think it's changed for the better. But you know, I just think we need to get a community, like just get everyone to know each other, do you know what I mean? Because everyone's a stranger now and it's, you know, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, for me it's weird because I grew up in the 70s. And it's, you know, as you can hear, we're obviously doing My Name Is Lenny at the back and we've obviously said Roll and they're all fighting at the back there, they are over our voices. Bisping from uh, the UFC, massive, massive star. You've got John Hurt, who is a British legend. You've got Josh Elman, an American, I'm sorry, an Australian plan, Lenny, which is we took some balls to do that. But he is absolutely nailing every part of this film, honestly. And when I first went on set in our first shoot, I was in tears watching him. So he was dressed up in my dad's clothes. He sounded like, and even my dad's brothers and sisters have been on set, and they went, it, oh, it looks like our brother, you know what I mean? And, that is just, and then that, that's when you know you've made the right choice. Because a lot of Lenny fans don't remember him from Lockstock, and it, oh, hello, mate, yeah. the big lump. Yeah. But we're doing a film about in the 70s, and my dad was very, very lean in there, very sort of, yeah. he was quite slight. And like when you see him, and then when the fans do see him, then they know we've made the right decision. I, I can understand it. I mean, like I say, I find it a little bit emotional seeing a film set that reminds me so much of my childhood. Yeah. But for you, and it's a film about your dad, it must be, you must, you've got to admit, must blubber something now and again. 
I always cry on the way home. <laughs> I ain't told no one, as I tell you, but it's uh, obviously no, hopefully no one sees it. I'm joking, but uh, <laughs> obviously, like every, as I drive home in my car after every day on set, I, I put a bit of music on it. It brings a tear to it my eye. It must be because, emotionally draining, though. Isn't it? Well, he wanted this for so much, so long, 30 years. 30 years, yeah. 30 years, you know, some people in this, who are acting here ain't even 30 years old, yeah. you know, and it's 30 years and we're here and we've done it and we've, you know, it, we've done, so we think, we hope, it, it's not, a, it's not, as my cousin said, it's not a Cockney fug fest, it's an artistic piece of cinema. And, hi and history. And history. Yeah. And an iconic London figure. Yeah.